Hey guys, Doris. Um, I know it's been a while, I just had a lot of things going on with me, and I was waiting for my parents to leave so I can do this video so I don't have to worry about anything. So, guess what? They left, and I'm home alone. So, I'm going to do something different. I know you guys are used to me watching style videos. Well, I have a new one. I'm watching Madison uh, Clark's video. You know, her from LO Staff, but I know her just as Madison. She is such a wonderful human being. If you don't know her, you need to look her up. She is one of the best person. Best people? I don't know. I don't know how to talk. I don't know how to person. That I've ever met. She is one of a kind. She's so genuine. She's so sweet. And I'll put everything in the description below if you guys want to check her out. She's truly an amazing person. So this is her My Life, My Words, and Q&A video. So let's get to it. She's so cute. Hi everyone, my name is Madison. Welcome to my first official video. I received so many emails regarding doing a Q&A video and I decided that this is the perfect opportunity for you guys to get to know Wait Madison, is there a Miley Cyrus picture in the back? Because I love it. I love everything about this place. It's just so cool. A little bit about me. First question. What is your favorite quote? My favorite quote is by Albert Camus, and it says, Truth, like light, blinds. Falsehood, on the contrary, is a beautiful twilight that enhances every object. I love this quote because I think Camus was talking about how people put on masks in order to appease people around them. Because it's much easier learning about the falsities in the world and hearing the harshness of truth. And I think his words really encompass a lot of my own personal beliefs about life in the world we live in and how most people aren't really comfortable being themselves and telling the truth because lying sounds so much prettier and yeah, it's so much true. easier to live that way. Um, the next question, do I still work for DreamWorks? Yes, I still work for DreamWorks. I love it. Working there so is cool. the most humbling and incredible opportunities that I've ever had. I recently collaborated on a project with Ikea called Nacho, which was amazing. It's super cool and you guys should totally check it out if you haven't heard of it. I have it and I will. What is my favorite song right now? I'm obsessed with Cherry Bomb by Spoon. It's my favorite song. It's great to listen to when you're happy, when you're sad, when you're driving. It's kind of like my bubbly song that really can be so to anything that I'm doing during my day. If you were given the chance to travel through time, would you go back to the past or go see the future and why? Well, if we weren't talking about my own personal timeline, I would definitely would love to travel back to the past. I think it'd be so interesting to have conversations with my favorite writers, to talk to Kerouac about his journey across the United States, to talk to Hemingway and Camus and Kafka, and really get insight into the inspiration behind their works. And I think it'd be a very interesting and humbling opportunity to hear more about them and their insight into the role in which they've lived in during that time. See what I love about her? She doesn't deal about her past. She deals about, like, the whole universe past, what she's so passionate about. That's what she wants. And it's one of the things that I love about her because it's, it's more than just her. She cares about so much. She has such a great heart, such a big heart, and it's, it's one of a kind. Where would you like to travel to next? Are you a traveler? I would love to travel to Australia. Same. Here, the Alicia, Whitney. So that, that makes me a little nervous since I have arachnophobia pretty badly. Same. Um, right now, unfortunately, I just have so much going on and I'm not really a traveler. And I do have a fear of airplanes, so that makes it a little bit harder. But I think oh, one baby? of my goals in this upcoming year is to travel more and to experience more places outside of the United States. Oh, wait, it's signed too. My next picture. If you could tell your 15 year old self something, what would it be? I would tell my 15 year old self Sorry. that it's going to be okay. That you're going to have your heart broken and you're going to go through so many things in life and you're going to feel isolated and you're going to feel alone and you're going to feel like you don't have anyone to talk to. 
but it's okay. And the things that happen to you in life will put you in a position to be the person that I'm here now talking to you guys. And I'm proud to be that person. And all the things that I've gone through in life made me who I am. And I would change just to think about it. And I think what I really tell myself is just, you're not alone. And there's so many people out there that love you. And you're going to have so many great people in your life now and friends and family. And just to be grateful for every single moment because it all works out in the end. What is one it's song? It's so that- true. Just everything she says, like, I never thought I'd be making YouTube videos, and she's helped me a lot just as being her, and she's been through a lot, and I just, she's just so right, and I just can't express, like, how much I agree with her, and how much it is so true, like, you, everything's gonna work out the way it's supposed to be, like one of my friends says, everything's meant to be and everything's supposed to happen for a reason, so just let things go as they go. I mean, it's not the end of the world. Even though you think right now it's going to be the end of the world, it's not. You're going to meet someone, you're going to look at one thing and it's going to change your life. That cat right there changes my life every single day I look at him. He makes me want to become a better person. And... He he gives me so much love, and it, it's just, I'm sorry, it's just, I'm really hard, it's hard to explain this. It's going to be okay, guys. If you're ever down, watch YouTube videos, that's what helped me. Talk to friends, look at your animals, because that's where your love's going to come, and that's when you know it's going to be okay. I will always be your favorite. I would say Don't Panic by Coldplay, which is be the one song that Stevie Coldplay. the soundtrack to my life. I could listen to it at any point in time, and it just encapsulates so much of what I've gone through and so much of where I want to be. I just, just feel at peace and at home. Really, the entire parachute album by Coldplay, I love. She, just, she, she listens to the words, not just the song. What are you most passionate about besides writing? I love her writing. I'm passionate about a lot of things. I really enjoy talking to people, getting to know people, helping people. I'm also very yep. passionate about working, and I'm very passionate about reading and music and just going out and experiencing the world. I think I wish I could experience the world. That's what I'm gonna I do. I want to do more of in this upcoming year and do more things to really gain a more rounded understanding of the world around me. I think I definitely want to start like hiking more and like going to museums and doing things like that because I think that I have been just so focused on other things that I haven't really taken the time to experience all of the cool art and culture things that there is to do in LA. How do you feel about all the love, stories, and emails from your fans? I she loves them. love it when you guys email me. I take the time to read every single comment, every mm-hmm. single That's one of the things that I love about her. She, she's not in it for, well, I'm not saying like, there's some people who are in it just for the money or whatever. She's in it for us. She's not doing this because, oh, hey, let's just put my name out there. Let's see if I can be famous. No, she's not one of those. Neither is Stevie Alley or anyone like one of those people either, just to clarify. But Madison, she genuinely cares and, you know, it makes her different to me. Now, Steve and Allie, they care so much. They love us. They show us. They appreciate us. So does Madison, though. Even it, What I'm trying to say is here is it's different the way they show us how they appreciate us. It's just... It's just different for me with her. And I love being able to create dialogue and to be able to talk to you guys and really create conversations. Mm-hmm. So please, email yeah. me want to talk, if you want to say hi, if you want to share your writing, I'm so open to all of that, and it really makes my day, you guys make my day, you make my day, I mean, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing, and this is why I'm here, because Mm -hmm. I want to talk to you guys, and I want to help you, and I'm glad that, you know, hopefully I can put a smile on your guys' face, just like how you do on mine. 
See, all I have to do is hear one of those. It doesn't even have to hear one of those, and I just smile automatically. Because I know what she's about, and it's just great because it's hard to find people like that. That genuinely care. So... Are you still in contact with some exes? Do you think it's good when you stay in contact, or is a clean cut better? Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Right before she says this, I, my, me personally, I think, you know, I only have like one ex, so you know, I don't date. Mm. But honestly, I think it's good to just get a good clean cut because if you're still in contact, those feelings are still gonna get there. I mean, not unless you guys had a great relationship. I don't know how your relationship was. But me personally, I think just a good clean cut, look how cute he is, just a clean, like, clean cut, getting away. Now, I am not in contact with any of my exes, nor do I plan to be in the future, just because I think, for me, when I'm not in a relationship and something happens and we break up, I feel like a breakup doesn't really change anything besides the fact you don't see that. You still have feelings, yeah. you still care but you just aren't able to so i think for me at least right now i definitely am put in a position where i don't think i could be anyone's friend that i've dated just because yeah. it makes things harder because it does having that person in your life that you love and you care about still but it's just different i think it's not beneficial to either party and yeah. it actually inhibits both of you guys from growing and fixing the things that didn't work in your relationship that's what I was trying to say about it. No, like how to say it. What are the most important things you look for in a relationship? In a relationship, Communication. I think I look for someone that I can be myself with. And that too. Who can sit with me and we can speak in our own language and we can do our own things and we can be comfortable in silence. I think that's one of the things that I seek out most in a relationship. Someone that I can be with and not have to talk to you. Yet, there's words that are exchanged between us that neither of us actually say. I also you know, she just gives you that look and you're just like, oh my god, I know she's in love with me. But Madison looks at everyone just like, everyone like she's interested in, all you can tell, everyone knows this, you can just tell that one look and you can tell how deeply in love she is. And that's one of the things that I love because she doesn't say it with a word, she just, she shows it. really look for loyalty in a relationship, I think that's very important. And I think being important, I like how you say that. Everything about yourself and not feeling like you're being judged or looked down upon. Do you believe everything happens for a reason? I believe that the universe conspires to make things happen. The world goes on for eons. You're so smart. We're only here for a fraction of a second. And I think that everything that happens in our life happens for a reason. And, may, and mm -hmm. we may not know what that reason is for a week, a month. So this is where but we agree on will. things. Everything works out, and I think that that's one of my core beliefs that I hold on to, and everything does happen for a purpose. Do you plan on getting married one day? I 100% plan on getting married one day. Ezra will be there. Down and having a family with kids and all that jazz. I just don't all know that jazz. when that's going to happen, but hopefully in the near future. I love those dimples. At what age did you start having tattoos? Do they all have a meaning for you? I, I love all your tattoos. tattoos. When I was 15, my first tattoo was a fitting sign on my hip, which represented the nature of four boys. Batman um, boxes! Oh Can we just talk about, please, how adorably Batman boxes are? Like, oh my god! <laughs> They're so cute. Sorry, fangirl. Play. so they pretty. I love the typewriter so much. When did you first realize writing was something that you really liked and wanted to pursue? I always knew I wanted to be a writer. Um, I believe words are gorgeous shapes that help categorize the chaos in the world. And I so that's one of the things I love about her. 
she takes it, you're right here, she takes it all the way up here to where you can't even see. Like, she, with her words, they're magical to me. Like, I don't know if it's because I understand it or if I don't understand it. It just, it's so awesome. And I love them. I love everything that she writes, everything that I've read that she writes. I'm not a big reader, but when she writes, I listen. I don't just, I try to find the meaning behind it. I know I'm not supposed to do that, or I don't know if I am, because, you know, I don't read, but I try to find the meaning behind what she's trying to say, and it makes you think. That's what I love. She really makes you think. Oh, that wasn't what I thought about. Sorry. How many skateboards do you own? Oh, I love girls on skate. I actually have one of the largest old school skateboard collections in the entire United States. Uh, I have like an entire storage unit just full of skateboards. Some of my favorite ones are in my apartment, hanging up over my oh, kitchen. So cool. But I love skateboarding. It was such an integral aspect of my childhood, and I love the artwork on them. And I think collecting and doing that with my dad and sharing the experience of collecting skateboards was something that was just so amazing and it really I really like that light picture back there. Sorry, I was staring at the light picture. What's your motivation and goals for 2016? I think my biggest motivation is bettering myself. I spent way too much time this year trying to appease other people and I think my biggest goal is to start being comfortable being by myself and doing things for myself and really working on myself and doing more things to help the community that I'm in as well. I think that's a really important aspect and I really want to give back to not only better myself but better those around me and that's my main motivation. That's good. What are you most looking forward to in 2016? I'm really looking forward to seeing where this goes. I'm really excited to see how this channel will grow and develop and evolve. Me too. And I'm excited I really to want to see how it goes. Takes us. And I think this opportunity of being able to use YouTube as a platform to talk about more things than a slice of my life is something that's so unique and I'm really excited to share it all with you. I'm so excited for everything. Which Doctor Who monster scared you the most? <laughs> I am absolutely petrified by the silence. If Slenderman and aliens kind of came together in a weird hybrid, that would be the silence. If you don't know what they are, Google them because you will be scared. I don't want to. What has been the biggest lesson 2015 has taught you? 2015 has taught me so much. I think I've grown more as a person this year than I have ever in any other time span. Um, 2015 has taught me to better myself, to learn what I'm passionate about and pursue it, to be open and honest and be okay being myself. And I think that's the greatest Still learning on that. that. Trying to be myself. could have ever taught me. It was most definitely probably one of the hardest years that I've, I've gone through. But the lessons that I learned this year were worth it because they're so overarching sorry. lessons that I'm going to need in the upcoming year to really be able to better myself and grow from it all. So I have some very special questions to a good friend of mine, Liz, and here they are. Where do you plan to be in the next 10 years? In 10 years from now, I see myself continuing to help people. I definitely see myself being settled down, married with kids. Continuing to pursue my passions. Where is your favorite place to spend time? My favorite place in the entire world is Locks Apache Park. Um, when I was in high school, a lot of things happened to me, and I didn't really go to class that often. And I would leave school, and I would go to Locks Apache, and I would write for hours, and I would not come home until the sun was down. And a place will always have my heart and carry it very special. What is your favorite TV show? I love TV. I watch Parks and Rec, Game of Thrones, True Detective, Shameless, Entourage, California Cation. I have a secret guilty pleasure, which is Teen Wolf. <laughs> I really like the the new season. <laughs> favorite candle scent. I am obsessed with Frosty and Cranberry. I feel like that is the smell of unicorns and a unicorn. Glitter. Ugh, I'm not a glitter person. Do you like the West Coast or the East Coast better? I'm 
a West Coast girl at heart. I was born and raised in Berkeley, so I think that the West Coast will always have my heart. And no matter if I'm on the East Coast, I always seem to be dragged out West. So I think I can see myself staying. I just out want west to go to California. That's all I know. I don't know East and West. Sorry. London. I would honestly love to live in South America or Africa because I'm the person who conversations. I go into an elevator in my apartment and I talk to people and I want to know how their day is. Yeah, I don't like people. I mean, if a beautiful girl like that, like Madison, walked up to you and talked, started talking to you, hell, I'd be like, ha, you're beautiful, ha, you're beautiful, you're cute. Sorry, there's a cat. See? You, you know, England, British accents, I mean, you can't go wrong. Oh my god, I love England, I'm sorry. People who know me, know how much I'm obsessed with England. just that let me do this little thingy that I do all right where is it oh yeah like like yay I liked it all right that's not gonna work you are caught up okay hi guys no work okay so Madison I love everything that you said I agree with a lot of things that you said really psyched for your other videos I'm sorry it's I told you I would do this. Sorry it's late if you watch this, but um, I love everything that you do. I hope you guys enjoy this. Um, I'm going to put everything that she put down in the link below. If you want to check her stuff out, I advise you to because she's amazing. And she's such a wonderful person and I can go on and on, but this video is already too long. I'm sorry guys. But I'm Doris and if you like this, please subscribe or if you like it, I don't know. I'm not good at promoting myself. But that's it, and hopefully I'll have more videos out. If you like me talking about Madison's videos, please let me know. That is my baby Garfield. Bye, guys.